saw a huge need for training people in how to have a relationship with God. We wanted to be in frontline work, someplace that was dark, where there was no, no real Adventist work being done in the area. We wanted it to be away from the influences of the city. That means that in order to get to a place that's away from those things, you have to be way back out in the mountains. Jason got out Google Earth and he found this spot that looked perfect. I hired a boat and in Klija I met a friend I had known several years before and he wanted to take us on an excursion down to the waterfall. And so we came down here and I spied a, a nice looking creek coming down the, the hill on the other side of the river. So a few days after that I hiked down here and uh, checked the whole area out and felt impressed to go ask the head man and the umper about the property. When they, we told him we wanted to start a school and we have an orphan's home, he said, just go find a piece of property and take whatever you like. That really surprised us. <laughs> that isn't something that I ever expected to hear. We knew this was the place. It was just exactly what we wanted. So we moved there and basically worked the place and now it's a school. The mission of our school is to send missionaries to preach God's Word in their own country. Probably the fastest way to get the information that they need is to teach in English. And it's one of the things that the people around here really want. A lot of our students come here thinking they're just going to get English, and they find out all about Jesus too. One of our purposes is to get them to see the life of Christ through us and desire that themselves. We're hoping that some of them will catch the vision for translation work because someone who speaks the language natively is going to be the best translator possible. We figured that if we can educate people, young people especially, they can go where we can't go and they can spread the word to their own villages. We have Bible, we have medical training, we have many different aspects that are going to prepare them for going and serving their own people. We've seen it happen in the past. We had one student that came to us for English. He wanted to be a general in the army. That was his goal. He'd gone home and then he couldn't get back because his, his home was on the other side of the fighting. And so it was like a year before he was able to get back to school. And when he came back, I always sit him down when they first come back and just kind of talk to them. And, and I was talking to him. I said, okay, so you still want to be a general? He said, no, I don't. I said, oh, what do you want to be now? He says, I've decided I'm going to be a missionary. He said, I already tried, and people laugh at me and make fun of me, but I'm just, I'm just trying. He stayed for another, like, nine months, and then he just couldn't stay any longer. He said, I've got to go tell people. I've got a lot of work to do. That's what the school is for. <laughs> Living in the jungle is interesting. It's beautiful. I like being close to nature and close to God. I like the sounds of the jungle, the, the creek and the river. Living in a bamboo house is kind of like camping all of the time. You are in nature. There, there's walls, but it doesn't keep anything out or in. If there are insects or birds, they come right in and share the house with you. We also have unwanted guests at times. I had a snake in my bed last, last week, I think it was. <laughs> that part isn't very much fun. We have to do our laundry in the creek by hand with a scrub brush. This time of year it rains most of the time and so our clothes don't like to dry and we always have to wear wet clothes. I don't know, <laughs> it's just the way it is. There are things about being a missionary that are easy. There are things that are hard. The easy parts are when your students come to you and they say, thank you so much for teaching me about Jesus. And one of my students told me, before I came here, I wasn't interested in the Bible. Now I just can't read it enough. That's easy. That's really easy. When they understand and begin applying in their own lives, practical Christianity, and you see them 
struggling and fighting and gaining the victory. That's when being a missionary is easy. That's when it's worth it. Totally worth it. It gives you a joy that you really can't gain anywhere else. There's other parts that aren't so easy. <laughs> like really no communication with the outside world unless you go two hours to town. And sometimes it's a little stressful going those two hours to town, especially when it's raining, the river's high, and it's a little dangerous, and it's cold, you forget your coat, you know. <laughs> that part isn't quite so much fun. The good parts outweigh the bad parts, I'd say. The things that I find the most challenging, being far away from my family. That's hard, but I know that I either have the opportunity to spend this life with them, or I have an opportunity to spend eternity with them. I would rather sacrifice a short time with my family for something eternal. Another thing that is hard is often over here, missionaries feel forgotten. It seems almost as if we're sometimes as forgotten as the people that we're working for. I'd like to say people is the greatest need, but not just any people. Christians are willing to give their lives for the gospel, willing to learn the language and show commitment. We don't want to have a lot of people in one spot because there are millions of people over here, thousands of villages that need help. They need to hear the gospel. I mean, this is just one little tiny dot in Asia. <laughs> and there's so many places that need Jesus. One of the hardest things about being a missionary out here is looking around and seeing all of the needs and not seeing people to fill those needs. They need somebody to come in and live Christianity so that they can see what it looks like. This is not a Christian country. They don't have any clue. You know, we... <laughs> We have church pastors who watch Harry Potter, just as an example, because they think it's good. It's just because they don't know. They don't have spirit of prophecy. They don't. Their Bible isn't very accurate. I mean, it's like they just don't have resources like we do, and they have had no examples to show them. Once you get older, it's really hard to learn the language. In order to really spread the gospel, we need young people who will learn the language and who won't just go home afterwards. And so people is probably definitely number one after the Holy Spirit. It's only God working through us, otherwise we're failures, complete failures. Finances are always challenging, but if you're willing to sacrifice, you can make it work even with hardly anything. I mean, if I got more money than I have right now, you know what I would do? <laughs> I would support more schools. I would support more Bible workers. Right now, I only have two Bible workers in three schools that I'm supporting. And I could do so much more if I had enough money. But right now, I'm kind of stuck because of that. And I can do things that the people in America can't do. For instance, there's a lot of people out there who just want your money. But if you live over here and you get to know people, you can tell the difference between people who are genuinely trying to spread the gospel and the people who just want money. So when I hear about a real need, I, if I have the money, I can give it to them. And I really like that. I don't think I have a life in America. I don't think I'm ever planning to go back. First of all, when I took on my little girls, I took on 20 years minimum. You know, you gotta raise them. So, we're down to 18 more years. But then, you know, they're in their early 20s, and then what are you gonna do? You can't just go off and leave your kids. <laughs> so, I really don't see a future for us in America. Christ was a missionary, and if we want to be like him, we will be too. It doesn't have to be overseas. We just have to be a missionary. Not only is there a world to warn that Jesus is coming really soon, 
but I don't believe that we will be ready for Jesus to come unless we're obeying. And Jesus said to go. He said to be a witness. If what we are doing is taking care of ourselves and our families and making sure that we are comfortable, when there's people practically next door that are dying without Jesus, that's selfish. And I don't believe that it's possible to be saved unless we get involved. Unless our focus in life is the same as God's, we're just not going to be ready when He comes. I think that mission work is like the biggest blessing God could have given us. Because if we're not doing anything for others, we think we're pretty good. We look good. We go to church. We pay our tithe. We don't do bad things. So we think we're pretty good when actually it takes getting involved and realizing that you are nothing, that you have no talents, and that you, you will blow it over and over and over every day, that you really see your need to Jesus. I think that's why mission work is so important. It's for us and it's for the people we come to minister to. Give me passion for the cross. Working for God is definitely the, the most exciting, rewarding, fun thing you could ever do. <laughs> Probably the biggest thing that every single person can do is pray. I can't tell you how many times I've had crises come and later find out that somebody was praying for me. That's really what helps us the most. Um, everybody can do that. There's lots of things people can do. For instance, you can write to missionaries. <laughs> you can send them letters and encouragement. You can help financially. Most importantly, I'm saving the best for last, you can go! <laughs> but only go with dedication. Only go with a desire to change lives. You can go for adventure, but that's kind of a dangerous thing to do. I know a lot of people who do that. Usually that's not really very helpful. It seems adventuresome when you think about going as a missionary. There's nothing, nothing like leading a soul to Jesus. Nothing like it. That's the true adventure. <laughs> and if you can get into that and you can, you can dedicate your life to doing that, that's what it's about. I will go and let this journey be my home.